Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make um, this um, African Violet uh, flat circle. Now I've previously done an African Violet hexagon, so it's very similar, um, but it's quite simple to, to turn it into a circle. Um, now I've done this before, made this into a coaster um, and I've done a placemat pot stand because you can make this larger by increasing I've even used this as a center of a hat anywhere that you would normally use a flat circle it's uh, perfect for so I'm using this with just scrap yarn um, these are all DK weight which is three weight uh, you can use four weight just make sure you use the right size crochet hook um, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. You'll be informed when there are new videos. I have quite a lot of tutorials on there already and loads more coming. Um, and if you could like and share this video, it would really help me grow my channel, which I'd really appreciate it. So, um, as I said, I'm using just DK weight and I'm using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. This is a Clover and More hook, which I'm um, using at the moment because I'm doing a trial on those and I'll be reviewing them. You also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle, which is in my box. So I'm going to start with this yellow, put these ones aside and um, find the end. There we are. Now you can start this with five chain and slip stitching into the chain to make a small loop. And then you will have um, a little gap in the center, which doesn't look out of place because there are these little gaps. So it can look quite pretty that way, but you can make it with the uh, magic loop or magic ring, whatever you want to call it. So I'm gonna show you a much easier way to do that uh, magic loop so I just make a make a circle make a loop insert my hook into it and pull the yarn through and that's it it's done ever so easy I'm going to pull it closed just a little bit because I don't like a big um, circle while I'm working um, where do I put my glasses oh, over there um, you can keep better control over it that way so I put my fingers on it and I'm going to do two chain so that's yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through which gets me up to the height of my first stitch now these first two will count as my first stitch so I'm going to yarn over and go into this um, circle yarn over and pull up a loop so we have three on the hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and in the UK that's called a treble crochet in the US a double so we're that's what we're going to be doing for now in any case. So we're going to work in groups of two. So those first two chain count as our first. So we have two stitches and we're gonna yarn over and pull through to make a chain. And now we need another two. So go into the same gap as before, into the same space and do two more. Always make sure that you are working over the ring itself and the tail and one more chain and do another two. If I go ahead of you at any time, then please just pause the video. So all together, we want six groups of two, six pairs. with a chain separating. And our last two, when you, when you are coming near the end, as you will see, that tail will pop up. So just keep it down, and make sure you're carrying on working over it. So I think that was number five, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five. This is my last group of two, but I'm not gonna chain afterwards. Instead, I'm going to join with a seamless join and I'm going to pull that slightly closed. So if you were doing this with a chain of five, you would end up with a little circle like that. But um, this won't be fully closed until we really secure this tail. Um, so just be careful it doesn't pull out. So now we've got, that's our first chain that we started with, and this is our second. And I'm going to go into this stitch here, and I'm going to join it with a um, half treble 
That's a UK term, a half double in the US. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop to have three on my hook. I'm not going to finish my stitch, however, I'm just going to snip off my yarn, leaving those loops on the hook and join my new colour, which will be the purple. So I'm going to just get out some yarn. I'm careful not to tangle them together. And what I do is I'll hold on. Remember, this is your centre and this is your working yarn. Just hold on to that working yarn at the back with your finger like this and bring the other one in and put them together. So you're holding both and then yarn over and pull through all three. So now you've joined your new colour and while I'm doing my tutorials, I like to secure this one I've just uh, snipped off and my new one with a little knot because it sometimes can work its way loose, especially as I'm not holding my work how I normally would while I'm doing a tutorial. So now I've got a few tails which we need to make sure that this one always stays intact so you can pull it. Now, if you look, we've got our groups separated by our chain. And this last one is separated and we're in the center of it. Um, so what we need to do now is go into that center of there, of our gap, our, our space, yarn over and pull up a loop. And not tight, but make sure that it's just a normal kind of tension. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull through and then I'm going to do a chain. So that's my first two chain and it's going to count as my first stitch. Now we are doing this part here. So what, how I'm going to do, we're actually joining half of it. So I'm going to just do half of my first part of my petal and all the others I'm going to do a full petal. Then when I get back, I'm going to finish off doing the other half. And this gives us a seamless join all the way around. So uh, what we're doing now is this part here and then we're going to carry on. So I need to do one more stitch and I'm going to work over these two tails, not that centre one, do be careful of that. And I'm just going to yarn over, go back into that same gap or space, we'll keep calling it a gap, yarn over and pull up and do my last stitch. So now I've got my first half. I'm going to get to my next space, which is this one. There's my my pair of stitches and there's my chain space. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that chain space and do my two and one chain and another two in the same space. So if you look, we've now got two, one chain and two in the same space. And I'm going to do that in each of my chain spaces. So don't worry about those tails. I'll try and move them out of the way as much as possible so that you can't see them and be confused by them. So I'm doing two, one chain and two in the same chain space. So that's in between every pair, you see? And we're going to keep going round and doing that in each one until we get back to the start where we'll complete our half, the other half of the first one that we've done. So I think I've gone over enough tail now to get rid of it all together. Just pop it off because this does make a few tails and it becomes a little bit difficult to see. So now we have the freedom of no tails. So if I put my finger behind, you can see the chain spaces and we're just gonna carry on with our little clusters in those spaces. And this is my last full one. I need a little bit more yarn. One chain, and now I need to complete this one. So I've got two, 
and that little piece there that little bit of yellow that you can see going across if I didn't go into the ring into that gap that space with at the beginning then that would have gone all the way across and it does look a bit ugly so I'm going to do two in there now I'm going to join it to uh, my top chain but slightly differently this time than how I did it before because I don't really want a big gap or to be in the absolute center of a large gap and I'm not changing color so I'm going that's my first chain there and that's my second chain even if I zoom I think it's a little hard to see see there's the first chain there's the second one and I'm going to go in and pull up a loop I think I might have only got one loop there it's hard to see it there we go I'm going to go into the two loops and yarn over and pull through a loop so I've got two on my hook now I'm going to yarn over and pull through both so I have a gap the size of a chain but it's not um it's not massive if you know what I mean it's not a big gap so I'm going to chain up two and now in between all of our petals all of our little clusters I need seven stitches so these two chain count as the first one and I'm going to yarn over and go into that space and do six more in the same space I need to pull some yarn and pull out enough so that's two I lost count then so that's one two three four five six I thought it was six I wanted to make sure so that's my seventh so I've got seven in between my um, my petals so I'm going to not do any chain in but I'm going to now do seven into the next one you can see the gap there so I'm just going to go in and do seven stitches we're going to do that in every single one all the way around just in that center one so I need to pull out a bit more yarn because it's quite a lot of yarn used in this round no chaining in between just our seven like a cluster of seven in each one of those chain spaces I'll zoom out because otherwise I'll have a tendency to go off camera. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to carry on going into the centre of each of my clusters, that chain space, and do seven in each and I'll catch up with you when we get to this point. I've made it all the way round so all I need to do now is join to the top of my first two chain which is right there and I'm going to do that but bring in my new colour sorry about the wobbly table I've got my foot on it now so hopefully that will be the end of the wobble I wouldn't mind but I have actually put something in the table to stop it from being wobbly but it's not working don't normally have this problem but we're putting a new floor in so how I do that again is I hold on to that tail there where it's still attached and I'm going to bring in my new color and go through both with that new color and I'm going to cut off the purple now that did elongate see that that stitch there that it did elongate a little bit so I'm just going to pull it tight tur, not too tight obviously but just going to pull it and tie that in a knot so all is not lost if that does happen to you but we don't really want it to so now we've joined our new color 
I'm going to just do a chain. Now this is the point where we have to be really careful because we need seven stitches all the way around. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one here is our seven. So I'm going to go into that stitch and I'm going to do one double crochet UK terms, which is a single crochet in the US, in every stitch all the way around. So there's, if, you, if, it, if it gets confusing, just count them. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. So there we are. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is our other one. It's right close by it. It's only because we have a join that they are quite close together on this particular petal. So I'm going to work over those tails again just to get them out of the way and we can get rid of them all together and then they're no more confusing. So we're going each stitch of our seven. And now when we get to this point, I'm just going to cut them off. It's only a, um, a swatch to show you. So it's not like I'm going to do anything with this. Just a tutorial. So I would do it more securely if it was a proper project. So now I have my seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're at this point. And we've got a hole here and a hole there. So we're going to drop our hook all the way down to that first hole and pull up our yarn and finish our stitch with an elongated stitch. Do you see that? So then we're going to pull that aside because this one is our first stitch and we need to do our seven um, UK doubles, US singles all the way around. That one is number seven. So again, we're not going to go into this space. We're going into this one and we're going to pull up our yarn so that it's elongated. Finish our stitch, pull that aside. And there is our stitch that we need to go into. And we're going to do our seven. Need to pull some yarn. That was three. Now, don't worry if it starts to curl in, just zoom out now. As you can see, can you see that? It's starting to curl a little bit, it doesn't matter. It's because we're not, um, we're not increasing and so it will, but it doesn't cause too much of a problem. It will pull out, so don't worry. So we just need to pull up on our um, elongated stitches and make sure that we go in each of our seven around. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back to you when I get all the way around and I meet up with you at the start. I've come all the way around and I'm on my last uh, stitch there. So I need to drop down and pull up my, my last elongated stitch. And then I'm going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is my first stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into that one. Not going to end off um, because the next round is going to be in the same color. Now you have to be watch what you're doing here. It's quite tricky because um, we need to start building up our uh, round. So how we do that, and I've written it down just to remind me. I'm to put my, I'm pull some more yarn. Bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to do two chain to start, which will count as my first stitch. And then in this first, so that's in this one. And in this one here, I'm going to do a half treble, which is a half double in the US. So that's pull through all three. So in my next three stitches, to get me over this hump, I'm going to do three UK doubles or US singles. So that's one, two, 
three. And now another half treble or half double in the US. Now over my next stitches, I need to bridge this gap. So I'm going to do um, three um, treble crochet, which is um, a double crochet in the US. So that's one, two, get it in there, three, and then I need to do a half treble. I think actually, sorry, now I need to do four treble crochets. And now pull out some yarn and do, no, I was right, sorry, backtrack. It is a half treble. I should have read my notes. I only just wrote this pattern. Um, I just used to do it from memory. So now, um, I've got to go over these three stitches, which is over the hump again. So I'm going to do um, double crochet UK, single crochet in the US. So it's three of those, half treble, three uh, trebles or doubles. See a pattern? So we do three of those, a half treble. Now the three small ones. So three double crochet UK, single crochet US, half treble, half double, then three trebles or double crochet. So we're doing three big stitches, but we're also doing three small ones and they're separated by a medium sized half treble. And that turns this into a circle. You just need to make sure that you get your first stitch correct. And if you at any doubt at any time that you're in the wrong stitch, then these top three ones, the top three, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these three need to be the uh, single crochet US or double crochet UK. Those are the ones that need to be. You're going over the brow of the hill, if you like. And then when you get into the dip of the valley, those are the ones that need to be the large stitch. So now I'm on my UK trebles, which is a US double. And now I'm going to, to bring that down with my half treble and now I'm going to do my UK doubles and my new half treble. It's at times like this I wish we didn't have different terms for our stitches because it gets confusing when they're called the same thing. But you know, it is what it is. But as you can see, that is now turning into a circle. On the last part, now I'm on my half treble and I started with my two chain, which counts as a treble obviously, so I should finish with two instead of the three. And now I need to slip stitch into the top of my first two. Now, if you wanted to change color at this point, you can. And as you can see, I did. I changed to a white one to make a coaster. And I'm going to do that, just snip off this green and bring in my white. But you don't have to do that. You can carry on as long as you do some increasing. Got my, I don't know why that went into there. Bear with me a second, just need to untangle my white. Right, so yes, as long as you increased as you went around. So by this point, if you were doing a normal circle um, and if you were using, say, a UK treble or US double crochet, you would probably be um, doing an increase in every fourth stitch. So you do three, then an increase of two, then three then an increase of two and on the next round you would do four then an increase of two so you would have already been doing several increases by the time you get to this point and that's what i did when i made the hat i just um 
kind of started to increase from here until I'd done enough because it was only for a child. So anyway, I'm going to join my yarn same way as before by holding on to that tail, bringing in my new one and holding the tail and so it doesn't elongate my stitch because it went perfect that time and just tie these together which I know does annoy at least one person that watches me but I'm sorry about that I like it to be secure so now all I'm going to do is the same as I did with this and that is one um, UK double crochet all the way around so that was a, UK, a US single crochet nice and simple just to finish it off nicely and I'm going to start with one chain and going into the same stitch and then into the next one which because we've made a join does look very close together but it's it's not too bad now this has got no increases in it this round and it's okay it won't really pull up and if it does it only takes a little bit of manipulating didn't go through the actual part of the stitch there I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that it annoys me so um yeah you just need to pull it out a little bit so i'm working over those two tails again just to get them out of the way it's when you get to that point you sometimes find that because they're different stitches underneath then the um sometimes you find it's a little bit more tricky to get into that part of the stitch if you know what i mean like underneath the first two um loops because we've done different different ones underneath so i'm just going to like snip them off get rid of them if it was my project i would be doing it a lot more securely but it's easy to sort of just get rid of them when you're doing this tutorial for some people that's enough just going over them that much see what i mean about the different stitches whereas normally it's quite a nice big chunky bit to go into because that was a uh, a different stitch it's smaller so i just make sure that i go through the same part of the stitch in each one going all the way around the edge but that's always supposing, of course, that you want to finish at this point. But you could still do this round just to finish it and then start. There's that small one again. You could then start doing increasing from this round on. But I think it makes it into a lovely little circle, a lovely little flat circle. And it still keeps the African violet um, shape and... Um, the pretty stitch you know the petals and everything so i must say using this screen it's um certainly helped um uh, with the uh, the fact that i couldn't with the darker ones although they're not actually as dark as they look on the camera uh, it was easy to see them while i was doing them but for showing you they were a little they came through as a little bit darker even though they weren't quite vibrant colours. I always find that purple is a very, very difficult colour to photograph in any case. It always wants to look blue. So now I'm almost back to the start. And all that I have to do now is slip stitch into that stitch there. And I'm going to end off because I'm done. But if you wanted to, you could chain two and start doing the increases. And just a little tip that if you do do that, when you're increasing if you do your increase in your first stitch for the first round and then do three and then an increase but the second round do your four and then your increase then your increases are always in a different place and it stops it from looking hexagon shaped sorry about that phone call coming through i thought i'd put it on silent but that's how it looks and um I was very pleased with um, with that, the way it came out. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't done already, um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell and please like and share. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye for now.